Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's meeting of council held on Tuesday, 18th of April 2023. To start the official proceedings, I would like to acknowledge that we are meeting on Jara country, of which the members and elders of the Jara Jara community and their forebears have been custodians for many centuries and have performed age old ceremonies of celebration, initiation, and renewal. We acknowledge their living culture and their unique role in the life of this region. Council meetings are audio and video recorded and are made available to the public via electronic media, including YouTube. Item one, uh, we have all councillors present tonight. We also have our CEO, our two directors, and our manager of governance and risk in the room, as well as Ben from comms, who is doing our comms. There are no apologies or leaves of absence. Item three, are there any declarations of interest or conflicts of interest? No. Item four, confirmation of minutes. And 4.1, meeting of council, 21 March, 2023. Do I have a motion? Councillor Henderson. Would you please use your mic, Councillor? Sorry, I'm taking the computer at the wrong document. If I just correct, I got ahead of myself. Yeah, I just want to um, confirm the minutes of the last meeting, March 2023. Fantastic. Um, and do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor. All in favour? Motion carried. Item five, acknowledgements. There are nil. Item six, public questions. Councillors, could someone please move to suspend standing orders? Yes. Councillor Cordy? Yeah, move to be suspend standing orders. Thank you, ma'am. And a seconder? Councillor Driscoll? All in favour? Motion carried. And we'll go into public question time. So we have one um, one question that was submitted by email. I don't think Bill Wigglesworth is here tonight. Um, so to save my voice, you'll see that I'm struggling or hear that I'm struggling. I will ask Councillor Driscoll to read his question or statement. Thank you, Mayor. This is a question from Bill Wigglesworth. Um, but Aaron Fazard, Council has stated, sorry, Council has stated it's aimed to introduce more effective measures to deal with our local graffiti problem. One, what can Council tell ratepayers now about its intention to restore the local graffiti action group, which used to meet regularly up until February 2021? And two, at what stage are Council's plans to introduce this year this year's comprehensive strategy to better combat all criminal graffiti in the Shire, a strategy that will significantly improve upon its current efforts. Thank you, Councillor. And thank you, Mr Wigglesworth, for your question. I know that you are very passionate in this space. And so are we, actually. I will hand over to both of our directors to provide some answers to this. First, Director Anir. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And thank you, Bill, for your question and the recent discussions that we've been having on this issue. Um, as shared previously, Council has been in discussions with the local police regarding the potential for graffiti to be included into a shire-wide community safety and security forum that is proposed for establishment. In addition, the draft budget that is proposed for public exhibition at this meeting um, tonight includes resources for Council to increase its capacity in responding to incidents of graffiti um, on Council assets. Um, as well as to explore the most appropriate platform to engage with community members and community groups who have expressed interest in this area. Officers are also in discussion with the local police um, to ensure our collective responsibility support each other. And I'll just ask now Director Knight if she can provide a little bit more information and then I'll come back to question two. Thank you, Director Anir, and thanks, Bill, for your question. And um, as Director Ani has already mentioned, there's been many discussions with Victoria Police, and that's with both Castlemaine Police. So I'd like to acknowledge the incredible support from Sergeant Beckham and also Goldfield's local area coordinator. And uh, once again, thanks to Senior Sergeant Darren McQueen 
Uh, the Mayor and I had met with both of those police officers again today. There's been many discussions right across the organisation to talk about what the collaborative approach could be to address graffiti. So VicPol have the same as council and the same as many other agencies received lots of feedback from community, the community and also from a range of agencies um, right across the Shire. They know that the that we're above state average. So the last five months, the data that um, is being collated by VicPol is certainly indicating that the last five months have seen an increase in the number of reports of graffiti offences, and that includes the reports that are coming through for Victoria Police. Of particular concern were the reported incidents in January. So in response, Victoria Police, in collaboration with Council and a range of other agencies, are looking at how they can improve their intel, and that is everything from data collation through to the uh, presence within the community and the number of patrols. They know that there's areas of interest, and there certainly have been um, a range of activities and a range of charges in response to the to the graffiti um, by VicPol. Can I just please reiterate to the community that in order to address the graffiti, we do need the community's help. So please call Crime Stoppers or get online for Crime Stoppers. Um, it is 1-800-333-0. Please also contact the Castle Main Police. And any reports can be anonymous as well. So if you are, if you do have any safety concerns, um, the Victoria Police and the Castle Main Police are very, very happy to receive any feedback, whether that's online or over the phone. I'll hand that to Director Ian for question two. Thank you, Director Nye. Um, so with regard to question two, um, just like to highlight that um, any issue related to criminal activities under the purview of the Victoria Police, and as Director Knight has just been mentioning, we are working closely with them, and if anyone can report um, any incidents, please do so. Um, in addition to that, uh, Council has been working with other state government agencies to put in place arrangements uh, for uh, quicker responses uh, to graffiti than are present on their assets, and this has been um, just achieved in the last month or so. So that should be able to help with some of the like, management of graffiti on non-council assets. Um, however, it won't be able to manage everything to date, so we will continue to have conversations with other state government agencies. Um, as in relation to our own efforts at the moment, as I mentioned previously, in the budget that's been presented today for public exhibition, there is an allocation of resources um, that will be able to assist in reviewing our current approach and in looking at ways that we can uh, move forward um, as council in the role that we play. Um, and can, that will then inform the considered changes. Um, however, at the moment, um, we're waiting for those resources to be able to help inform them. Thank you. Thank you, directors. And I'd really like to acknowledge how seriously you and your teams are taking this. Um, I almost think there's not a conversation we have in which I don't mention graffiti at this point. And our response, um, it's just, it's really coming together well. I really appreciate it. And I know that our community does as well. Are there any more further questions from the gallery? Would you like to come up to the lecture? And if you can just tell everyone who you are. Yeah, that would be fantastic. I'm Beth Phillips, Secretary of Maldon Urban Land Care Group, or MOLGA, as we call it. I was quite correctly not allowed to speak at the last council meeting. I was a bit flummoxed at the time. Uh, I did make a couple of comments to a council officer when I left the meeting, and I note that the web page relating to questions at council meetings has since been updated to include all the relevant governance requirements without us having to access, go off to link pages elsewhere that's on the first page, so that's great. I also note that there's been no contact with me by any council officer since the last meeting. What I have to say takes a minute or so longer than the three, a lot of three minutes, and I guess I respectfully hope that I'll be allowed to get to the end. We wish to comment on the planned or gender facilities project at Bill Woodville Reserve in Malden. Firstly, for those councillors who we've not addressed previously, since 2017, Mulga has been conducting a project surveying eucalypts that have been growing in the Malden area, in Malden and the surrounding area, since before 1852, pre-European settlement. We've surveyed 347 trees, including species location and age estimation, based on the trunk diameter, and 200 of the trees are on council-managed roadsides. The data was included on the Victorian Biodiversity Atlas and also on the Council's mapping system, 
except for the most recently surveyed 26 trees. In 2017, we surveyed 19 remnant eucalypts at the Billwoodville Reserve. However, one fell down in a storm and four have been either cut down or pruned by council staff. One of these is happily regrowing from the stump. For the few councillors who heard our question about the severe pruning of a remnant grey box in early 2020, multiple stems of regrowth occurred from the branch stumps and the tree was finally ringbarked early um, last year and retained as a habitat tree. We understand that at the time of the pruning, the tree manager, management officer on a short-term contract at the time had not been informed about the existence of the pre-1852 eucalypts at the Woodfall. He's now employed by the council, council and I'm pleased to report that we met with him on site last year to review the pruning plans for a few of the remnant eucalypts at Brookfield Woodfall and one street tree for their ongoing health. Let's just say that he was very astounded when we told him the estimated age of the trees at Bill Woodfall from 180 to 365 years, and plus the grand healthy yellow box that is estimated to be 540 years old. Mulga has been a stakeholder for the planning of the new facilities at Bill Woodfall, and we provided our remnant eucalypts data to the consultants undertaking the heritage study in late 2020. We were considerably relieved when the first preferred site for the facilities was changed to the current location, as the previous site would have significantly impacted on the tree protection zones for two remnant long limb boxes. <laughs> Along with the paragraph, yeah, I'm gonna look, I keep going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow it, um, considering I didn't let you speak last time, you, you may continue. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Along with the paragraph about the mature endemic eucalypts identified by Morga, this issue was identified in the context for the planning application in the agenda document for the March Council meeting. In addition to the new facilities, there is also a plan for new lighting for the oval at Bill Woodfall. We note that the location of one of the lights is likely to significantly impact on the tree protection zone for one of the surveyed eucalypts. We understand from the relevant council officer that the plan has been sent back for redesign, perhaps for other reasons, and if necessary, we will have an on-site consultation about this. The approved planning permit for the all gender facilities includes requirements for a landscape plan. Two younger grey box trees or eucalyptus microcarpa being removed are to be replaced with the same species, which is why we wanted to correct the species name in the lists provided in both the agenda documents and the arborist report. Eucalyptus macrocarpa is a West Australian species and would have no hope growing in the tough ground that we have in Maldi. The landscape plan is also required to show the tree protection zones for our survey trees to the satisfaction of the Council's Heritage Advisor and tree protection fences are to be erected around trees nominated on the endorsed plans. We note that bollards have previously been erected in two separate areas in the vicinity of the netball court to restrict, restrict car parking near a few of the remnant eucalypts, including the very old yellow box. This is the first time that there has been acknowledgement and consideration of surveyed pre-1852 eucalypts in Malden, in both the context provided for a planning permit application and the requirements of an approved application. And to us, it seems likely that this has occurred following the referral of the application to the Council's Heritage and Urban Design Officer, who we know is aware of the old trees. We are heartened that this has occurred and would like to hope that planning officers will consistently check the mapping system for the location of our remnant eucalypts when relevant. This has not been the case prior to the Bill Woodfall application and we continually monitor green light for planning applications that may have impact on the pre-1852 eucalypt. Thank you. So, um, it's really nice to hear what you were planning to say last time. I know we were all interested in what you had to say. Unfortunately, we just couldn't allow it at that time, but I'm really glad you came back yes. so that we could hear your words. I thought it was important. I think it's important for councillors who haven't heard it before to hear about what we've been doing. Thank you very much. And you'll also be heartened to know that Councillor Henderson managed to pick up on that species name 
and it was corrected and micro I looked them up. <laughs> so that has all been taken care of as well. Are there any further questions from the gallery? No, if, if there is not, um, could someone please resume standing orders? Councillor Corby. Yes, uh, we resume standing orders. And do I have a second them? Councillor Henderson, all in favour? Standing orders are resumed. We are moving on to item seven, petitions and letters, of which there are nil. Item eight, committee reports, there are nil. Item nine, officer reports, and 9.1, community. 9.1.1, adoption of Mount Alexander Shire early years plan 2022 to 2026. Uh, Councillor Henderson, would you introduce this item, please? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, the purpose of this report is to present the Mount Alexander Shire early years plan 2022 to 2026 for adoption. The report includes updates made to the plan following public exhibition of the draft plan in November and December 2022. Uh, it was made uh, available for public comment uh, between 25th of November and 15th of December last year, and uh, six submissions were received. No objections were substantially confirmed. However, a small number of additional considerations were suggested. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a motion? <coughs> Councillor Henderson. Yeah. I'd like to move that Council adopts the Mount Alexander Shire Early Years Plan 2022 to 2026. And do I have a second? Councillor McCullough, thank you. Is there any opposition? No, then Councillor Henderson, would you like to speak to your motion, please? Thank you, ma'am. I know this is something close to your heart. I think you were the chair of the uh, steering committee. But just, yeah. just remember. Just a big amount of the matter, however. Is the second of our early years plan. And uh, it goes, it's for uh, particularly covering the years uh, zero to eight years old. So it's very much uh, looking at our young people, and uh, it's very good to be this. Focus is on the, uh, the young people's well being, health, their growth, and their learning. It aims to support their families, the services they use and need. Communities around them and the environment where they live and enjoy growing up. So it's, uh, I really like the uh, simplicity of this plan. I love the product cover. I love the artwork. It's, um, we have a, a sun with attitude in the corner there. He has nice square specs, very good. Big. And, uh, and very, very brightly lit. There's some very beautiful drawings in this. However, I should say a bit more about the, the text because it is for adults. To, uh, to adopt and uh, consider, even though uh, it's uh, focused on children. So we'll actually plan this through it. We'll guide how council, partners, service providers, and the community can work together to maintain child friendly communities where children thrive and belong. And uh, we have a steering group which not only helps put this together, but will actually follow the implementation of this plan. And uh, so we have uh, somebody from the Department of Education and Training, early years improvement branch and career education support, local child care centres and kindergartens, and disability, parenting services, like higher health, family services, early intervention, personal library, council and parent community members. So it's quite a uh, substantial body. And I'm pretty impressed that these, all these people are able to come together to help build the plan. Uh, it was, there was a survey done of 327 children between the ages of three and eight, five towns from eight kinders and schools. That's pretty good. And there were also 111 respondents to the parent and carer survey, and 12 key informal interviews with service providers, five pop-up consultation sessions at local playgrounds. That would have been interesting. One council workshop across six teams and to focus groups with parents and carers. So it's certainly had a lot of uh, important input and uh, there's um, an action plan, of course, at the end, which is what it's all about. And it covers four priority areas. Belonging uh, is one, then supporting, collaborating, and connecting to place. And I think that all together there's uh, 30, 19, just 19, sorry, it's had to be under 30, but too many last time, under 20, beg your pardon. 
And there's some really interesting ones. I do like um, formalized consultation with children to help inform our community's decision making on issues that matter to them. So that's one of our communication uh, branch, and I'm sure that they'll be up to the task. Now, the people, uh, newly strengthened communication branch. Uh, and also support efforts to increase childcare places as well as supporting. Uh, so council will be a support partner here to increase childcare places throughout the shire because we know that we're sorely lacking in, in numbers there and also more kinder places and also i think that was state funding for infrastructure upgrades where required and then what have we got um co-locate support trial friendly co-located service models that kind of meets the needs of children and families in the shire rather than having to run from one place to another, and all over the going to try and get the services you need. And then, of course, the last one connecting to a place, identify where walking and cycling paths have been, and the children and families ensure their voices and needs are prioritized according to upgrades and place based renewals. Very important. So, this is a very important plan and a very well constructed plan. I think it will serve us well uh, as. Uh, partners in helping to improve the lives of children and their carers and parents and then for the whole community over the next four years but i would encourage everyone to have the wonderful artwork in here uh, we have cats we have um, them seem to be also places of residence because they've got steps up to um which looks very interesting and we've got um a very young uh, dog with attitude on the window nice swimming pool um, we've got uh, Thomas is advocating if, to make Mount Dickey uh, Shire an uh, even better place to live. We'd like uh, mini golf and a zoo, so we have a nice picture of a giraffe. This is, I mean, it's easy to laugh at children's uh, artwork, but really, when's the last time you did any artwork? I mean, probably, you know, this is really good artwork in <laughs> here. Some beautiful stuff being done. So I think it's really enhancing the plan to see it. And uh, all marks everyone who helped put it together. So that's why I dropped the Mount Alexander Shire earlier as planned. Councillor? Fantastic. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Councillor McClure, would you like to speak to the motion? <coughs> I think uh, Councillor Henderson's kind of really well <laughs> ticked off everything that I had in my mind. So that's, look, it is a great, I, I want to support it. It is a great document. It, not, it not only looks good, it, it reads well, but it, it's got some important stuff in there. And, Particularly when you look at, as the Christian said, or Councillor Henderson said, the number of young children that they engage with to, uh, to, to work, you know, to uh, develop this this thing is uh, fantastic. It's a great document, and I would commend everybody to just uh, has the ability of to get hold of it and have a look at it. It's a great document. Thank you. Would any other councillor like to speak to this item? Councillor Driscoll. Oh, thanks, Mayor. I just want to thank. Um, Lisa, Paul, Sally, and the team to work on this. I mean, it gets approved in normally in five minutes. I've got when I'm in Council Henders talking, it's probably 15, but um, but um, it's a lot of work spot into this. Thank and uh, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Councillor Driscoll. And I don't mind Councillor Henderson taking her time at all on matters like this. <laughs> Councillor Gardner. Uh, thank you. I was just going to reiterate what Matt said. Um, and I just wanted to probably point out some of the challenges on this in that um, for council, it's probably opposite and how hard they work and how they're engaged with the community. It's a bit like herding cats, like we're not really responsible for everything in this plan and we have to encourage and support others to do it. Um, so um, it's it can be a tough gig, um, but I know that the team um, will keep working with um, our partners in this space um, to achieve a lot of the objectives. Um, and I know, there's certainly, you know there was certainly heavy emphasis on medical, so general practitioners and stuff. So it'd be good to see some of our other organisations in town um, do some heavy lifting in those areas. But it's a good document, well done to the team who put it together. Does any other councillor wish to speak to this item? Councillor Henderson, do you get a chance to speak again if you would like? I'm going to speak this one in a minute. 
Thank you. 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 Thank it is a really efficient, um, high-functioning group of people who care very much about our youngest community members and really know what, what is lacking. I think um, adding to that, we did an amazing amount of consultation, particularly being able to consult with young children directly is such a powerful thing. I always love um, consultation like this because I get to go around to some of the schools and sit down with the young people and... Uh, and be with them while they kind of give, give feedback and it's really nice. Um, especially these kids, uh, things that really struck me were how empathetic they were. Uh, a lot of their responses were things that might never happen, like, you know, a rocket launcher. And a lot, an awful lot of them want things like McDonald's and 7-Eleven and, and things that might not come this way for quite a while and perhaps as they get older they won't want as much. But they really cared about things like everyone having a house to live in. They cared about things like animals not getting killed or run over. They cared about things like all children being able to play on playgrounds because they were accessible enough for them. Um, and they cared a lot about our natural environment and making sure that we have a beautiful place to live in for a long time. And hearing a seven-year-old tell you that is very, very, very humbling. And it is a point where I'm able to say to them, you could absolutely be there one day with that kind of empathy. Um, there are so many thank yous for this document as well. Director Knight and her team, and particularly Paul Fry and Sally Beatty, who went above and beyond to get this plan ready on time, given that, they, that the time was rather tight for this, and they did it amazingly without sacrificing any quality, without sacrificing any consultation, um, and they made it genuine, which is the one thing that I really wanted. I wanted it to be genuine, and I wanted it to be, have little aspects of fun in it. The other big thank yous, of course, are to everyone who made the submissions during the two periods of community consultation, and particularly the young children. We engaged with 227 children aged three to eight who were able to, to talk to us through writing and pictures. Um, that kind of engagement from young people is rare, and it's really impressive how much they care about their futures and other people. The other thing that I would like to mention on this is that in the proposed budget, which we will come to later, we have, we have proposed $15,000 for implementing this early years plan, not just this year, but every year for the lifetime of this plan, which I think is really important because we're valuing it enough to make sure that the money is there for implementation because we know how many challenges there are out there at the moment, especially for families with young children. Um, it's, yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with this report and I'm so glad that we've been able to endorse it tonight. All right, that's enough on that one. Moving on to 9.1.2. This is community grants awarded in 2023, round one. And Councillor McClure, would you like to introduce this item, please? Um, the purpose of this item or paper is to provide council with the outcomes of the community grants program. 2023 round one, and to outline the decision process undertaken by officers for the allocation of funds. Fantastic. And do I have a motion? I, I'm happy to move, Mayor, that the Council notes the allocation of funding for Community Grants Program 2023 round one, being 18 applications for a total allocation of $48,845. Do I have a second that? Councillor Mulby. Is there any opposition? No. Then, Councillor McClure, would you like to speak to your motion? Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, it was great to uh, see the number of um, number of applications. I think uh, we, though, there were more applications than the Council could, uh, could um, handle with this round of, um, of our applications for, the, for this funding, and it's great to see that there's so much interest in community groups getting these, this, uh, these funding rounds. Um, obviously, we can't get money to everybody, so it's a pretty tight uh, selection process. And I'm pleased to see the organisations that have been successful 
uh, there's a list of um, 18 groups, 18 successful groups that have got funds up to $3,000 to help them um, with their programs that they're running throughout the community. And they're, they're all great programs. I mean, the one that piqued my interest a little bit was the Man Alexander Aging Disgracefully Project Group, and I'd love to know um, what those guys give up to. It's fine. Yeah, you got to do some investigation. But um, look, it's um, it's a great program, and I'm pleased to support this. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Motby, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thanks, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor McClure is correct. There's many applications, and many are all good, without doubt. And the officers have done the right selection process, naturally. There is a second round coming later in the year that people can apply for another lot. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Would anyone else like to speak to this motion? Councillor Driscoll. Thanks, Mayor. Um, when I'm out and about, I'll mention these grants, these awards. Um, and um, I think all, all, there's, there's 37, I, I think, applied and only 18 got it. So I just go back to those groups and try again. Um, and you know, we've got it's a hundred thousand dollars in the budget. I think we'll probably continue to do that. And it's a really good way for, of uh, community groups to uh, get a little bit of money, a little bit of help. And I think it's a great uh, opportunity for them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? Councillor McClure, you have the opportunity to speak again if you would like. I'm good, thanks. I will then put the motion. All in favour. That is everyone, motion carried. And I'm going to speak to this one too because this is one that brings me quite a lot of joy. Um, I actually wrote everything down because I was worried that I would lose my voice and I'd have to get someone to read it for me. But I, I seem to be doing okay. And I, I think the thing that I always get so impressed about um, when I read the results of these community grants and the events grants that are coming next is how many interesting people there are in our community wanting to do interesting things for other people in our community. Um, I think that's very special and it's a big part of why I really love living here because there is almost never a weekend that goes by when there's not something interesting happening that you can get along to. And the fact that we're able to make so many of these things possible through both our community grants and our events grants is really special as well, I think. So thank you to everyone who applied and congratulations, obviously, to those who were successful. I think it's really worth highlighting again that this was the most competitive round of community grants, both in terms of quantity and quality, since the program started. So to those who missed out, it was not because your application wasn't good. It was just an incredibly competitive round. Um, having said that, thank you again to Director Knight and her team, particularly Sarah Grady and Shana Crockley, and those officers who assessed and scored the grant applications. I really don't envy what would have been a very tough job this time around. These community grants, as I've said, are such an asset to, to our community, and I see them making a difference to so many people in lots of different ways. I'm always impressed by the diversity of projects, and I'm always so excited to follow their progress as they come to fruition. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, as Council has mentioned, there is another opportunity. We run a second round of these later in the year as well. We are moving on now to item 9.1.3, events grants awarded 2022-2023 round two. Mm -hmm. um, Councillor Henderson, would you like to introduce this item, please? Uh, certainly, ma'am. Uh, so the purpose of this report is to provide the Council with the outcomes of round two of the events grants program for 2022 2023 and to outline the decision process of council officers for the allocation of funds. And I move that uh, council notes the successful applicants for round two of the event grants um, for a total allocation of $33,000. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Do I have a second now? Councillor Cordy, thank you. Is there any opposition? No, um, Councillor Henderson, would you like to speak to your motion, please? Uh, yes, certainly. There. Uh, so there, there were a total of uh, 18 applications, so not as many as for community grants. I'm glad we did it. We used to have the morning together back in the day, we separated them out, which was a very good move, I think. So we did a separate strand for community grants. And the assessment was conducted by a panel of three experienced council officers, 
using the Smarty Grants platform. So their assisted with technology to help them. And uh, that comes up with a rating. And there was even, uh, and actually eight out of 17 applications representing new applicants, which is exciting. So new events on the horizon, rather than just same old, same old, worthy of support, but uh, we've got new ones coming on board. So that's great. And I'd like to know, particularly, uh, Castlemaine Folk Festival is coming along. Is that a new one? Uh, as opposed to a jazz festival or architecture, so I'm sure Councillor McClure will be there buying his tickets pretty soon. Uh, and uh, the good off shop, new reuse and repair workshops, is, um, is good to see. Uh, the Village Festival of New Performance Inc., kind of mold and fire garden. I'm sure that um, Councillor Gardner will be excited about that. Um, the Village Festival do specialise in, in fire. Winter, they have great performances like that, even though they do put a bit of damage in the gift park back in the day. And then, oh, Rotary Club, of course, Castlemaine Rotary Truck Show, there it is. That's a, an oldie but goodie and uh, very worthy of supporting. And then the Hot Rods Centre doing a coffee cruise, and I might just have to join if someone can lend me a hot rod to go around it. But anyway, a nice mixture of uh, events happening in our shire, funded by our partially funded, supported by council. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Henderson. Councillor Cordy, would you like to speak to this item? Yes, thanks. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I'd just like to note that uh, there's some fantastic events and uh, great uh, community organisations represented. But really, it's all about um, council creating, being a sort of a catalyst to uh, Get things happening, and certainly, uh, certainly, um, with uh, the lockdowns we experienced during COVID, then I'm sure all these these events and uh, and uh, activities are going to be very well supported. So, uh, thanks very much for the team that um, did a tough job of sorting them out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? No. Councillor Henderson, would you like to speak again? All right, I will then put the motion uh, all in favour. That's everyone, and motion carried. I'm going to jump in here again. Apparently, I'm more organised, but I have to write things down in advance. Who knew? Um, events, obviously, community grants, great. Events, grants, great. I'm really glad we've separated them out so that there is um, more opportunities for more people. Congratulations to all the successful applicants. Um, we were able to fund. 17 and eight of these are new events that we haven't seen before in the Shire. And I'm always really excited about new events coming in. I think that's indicative of, of good things happening. Thank you, obviously, to Director Knight and her team, particularly Lucy Curry Cheney and all the officers who sat on the assessment panel as well. Um, looking at this list again, you're just really struck by the diversity of events that are on this list. It's not all one kind of thing. There is something there for everyone. And it is, again, the kind of thing where you look and you feel quite proud of a community that is willing to, um, you know, and has the passion to put on events all the time um, and has such interesting ideas. Um, I think it's the kind of thing that makes our Shire such a great place to live in. And I'm happy that we're able to, to give them some money towards it. I will note here that there was an underspend in the events grant project this round, and this amount was able to be reallocated for the 2022-2023 quick response, uh, response events grants, as this year's round has been very popular. So this, uh, this will allow for some small autumn and winter events to seek funding, which will really give the Shire the boost that it needs in what is usually a quieter and much colder period of time. So yeah, thank you again to everyone for that one. We are moving on to 9.2, environment, are we? Sorry. Yes. Um, and 9.2.1, response petition from Wesley Hill residents seeking a meeting regarding various traffic and pedestrian safety concerns on Duke Street, February 2023. Councillor McClure, would you like to introduce this item? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, Council received a letter from a group of Wesley Hill residents on the 2nd of February 2023 regarding pedestrian safety crossing Duke Street 
particularly near the Westy, Wesley Hill Bakery. The letter is signed by 25 persons and requests measures to improve pedestrian safety, such as speed reduction, designated crossings or a traffic island. Duke Street, which is the Pyrenees Highway, is a declared arterial road. Hence, the Department of Transport and Planning is the responsible authority for considering the, uh, the matters raised in this letter. The residents have requested the council assist them to approach the Department of Transport and planning about their concerns. The council, a council officer followed up on behalf of the residents with the Department of Transport and Planning regarding the request, requested pedestrian safety measures. The department advised that it would investigate a reduction in the speed limit in Duke Street and the provision of a pedestrian crossing facility near the Wesley Hill Bakery in the coming months. The department noted that a reduction in speed limit from 60 kilometres an hour to 50 kilometres an hour kilometers per hour may not be consistent with the speed zoning technical guidelines uh, that they use. The department further noted that the provision of a pedestrian crossing facility such as a pedestrian refuse may be a low priority for Bundy considering the relatively low pedestrian volume and the lack of any reported crashes in the latest five-year reporting period. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a motion? I'm ha happy to move the recommendation as printed that the Department of Power Council notes that the Department of Transport and Planning is the responsible road authority for Duke Street and the matters raised in the President's letter. Two, that it notes that the Department of Transport and Planning will investigate the residents request for reduction in the speed limit in Duke Street and the provision of pedestrian crossing facility near the West West Hill Bakery. And three, notes that a council officer will advise residents the will advise the, represents, the residents' representative of the outcome of the council's consideration of this matter. And do I have a seconder? Councillor Mulping. Is there any opposition? Councillor McClure, would you like to speak to this item? Thanks, Mayor. I'm pleased to, to talk about this. Um, I was with uh, the deputy, or I was sitting on the deputation that we had from the uh, group of um, Wesley residents with the mayor. And we had a morning with them. Um, it's a very good um, constructive discussion with quite a number of people. It wasn't one or two, we were about 15 or 20 or so in the room. So it was quite a deputation of people, very passionate about um, getting some happy improvements in, um, in, uh, in Duke Street. And uh, I guess that's principally because um, Duke, Duke Street really splits Wesley Hill environment down the middle. And there are quite a, a bit of activity, perhaps mostly on the southern side, which is where the stadium and everything is. So people do have to cross Duke Street at some point um, to get to the to the southern side to go to the sporting facilities and everything else that's open on the other side. And conversely, the opposite when they want to go to the bakery, grab some bread. So look, I, I'm a little bit disappointed to, to read or hear that DOT are fairly fairly disinterested in looking at this thing when they consider that there's been no accidents in the area in the last five years. I mean, it's terrible to think that it would take an accident to happen before that they, they would, would look at this. I think the fact that we've got a group of concerned residents, such as and a large group of residents that take the time to come and talk to council, I you know, it was a fairly long discussion over one morning, and I think they were genuine in their concern about the... Uh, the lack of facilities for crossing the highway, particularly for their children, for school children. You've got a major bus stops and they're all on the southern side of the highway. So kids do have to cross now a very busy highway. So I think it's worth um, the council spending some time in urging DHG to have a look at this and uh, consider what can be done to improve the facilities for people crossing, safe and crossing the highway. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McClellan. Councillor Murphy, would you like to speak to this item? Thank you. Um, Councillor McClure is correct. It is a very busy part of Castle Main and certainly crossing from the south to the, to the north part. Many years ago, when they shifted the Corbin Highway access out the back, they told us there wouldn't be as much traffic going via Wesley Hill and Tubin. The fact is that it hasn't been corrected. <laughs> Uh, many locals, including I would suggest myself and others, still go to the call of the highway that way. 
So there is an issue that the OT need to look at. And the bureaucratic response, but we haven't had any reported accidents. Don't you actually plan ahead instead of fixing up afterwards? So yes, we should continue to progress to see if we can get action. Thank you, Councillor. Does anyone else wish to speak to this? Councillor Cordy. Thanks for that, Mayor. Um, look, I was sort of reading, reading the, uh, the response there to the uh, community and I'm not really satisfied with it. Like when I look at um, all of our communities, we've got, we've got 40 in Barker Street, 40 in uh, Argrove Street, we've got uh, uh, 50 in Newstead, we've got 60 in Harcourt, the whole the whole thing seems to be a bit of a, a bit of a mess, and I'm not really I'm not really satisfied how how this is being applied. I think um, the um, particularly through this uh, Chewton area, it's a high risk area. You've got the um, the market runs out there. You've got other other enterprises out there, and it's a you know it's it's a very narrow narrow carriageway. I think it's more risk, and uh, yeah, I'm not really satisfied with uh, the response from um, Regent Roads or Department of Transport, or whatever they do themselves now. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? Councillor McClure, you have a right of reply. All right, I will then put the motion. All in favour? Everyone, motion carried. And I'm going to speak to this one too because. Um, Echoing um, the, the words of my colleagues, I'm a little bit disappointed in the response that officers received from Department of Transport and Planning. So, uh, the, I mean, I really would like to thank the people who raised this initially and after they submitted their letter and petition, they requested a meeting with the Castlemaine councillors. Um, Councillor Motby was unable to attend, but Councillor McClure and I did spend an amount of time with them in, in this room, quite a few of them. They all, you know, they all made the effort to come in um, on a school morning and get here on time and we had a very productive conversation. And they were able to really uh, fill in the gaps for us about their, their concerns. And it really, a, a lot of it was regarding safety. We heard a lot of stories of near misses and close calls and actual accidents that may not have been captured by data. Um, many of these involved children and older people people living with a disability and also cyclists. Um, and, you know, we're kind of committed to making uh, transport safer for, for these people. So I think there is something to be said for uh, having a, a good look at these things. And I really hope that the department takes these concerns seriously, because just because there has been a lack of serious accidents in the last five years, it doesn't necessarily follow that this is a safe place to cross the road or that no accidents will ever happen there. And I would prefer that our community was as safe as possible and that we were able to address safety and accessibility concerns before accidents occur, not afterwards. Um, so I think, you know, we're, we're taking this as seriously as we're able, noting obviously that there's not a council road, but um, I, I have absolute faith in Michael's team, our director and his team, to follow this up. And we don't know what response we'll get from the department, but I think we're prepared to discuss that response if it is something that we think needs to change. Um, thank you. So we're moving on now to 9.3 economy and 9.3.1 planning application PA 273 slash 2022 Kitan Metcalf Road Metcalf. And Councillor Henderson, would you please introduce this item? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, purpose of this the court is to enable council to make a determination on an application for re subdivision of three lots into two lots at Clinton, Metcalf Road, Clinton, uh, The application has been referred to council for a decision because the council office the recommendation is to refuse the application. The land is approximately 92.5 hectares in the area and zone farming zone, subject to course. 35.7 of the monetary funding scheme is affected by bush financial overlay and environmental significance overlay. Uh, it's also partially within the narrow Aboriginal cultural heritage sensitivity and contains waterways, tributaries to Snowgrass Creek. 
The subject of uh, the application is seeking permission for the resub revision of three lots into two. Um, <coughs> And the subject site is uh, made up of six parcels, where only three parcels are subject to the proposal for a two lot three subdivision. The flows for panel of subdivision shows two new lots comprising lot one, 41.2 hectares, and lot two, 51.4 hectares. The application has been assessed and considered to be contrary to the relevant sections of the planning policy framework. And the visions of the farming scheme, far, sorry, farming zone, particularly in relation to potential loss of production, productive agricultural land to non agricultural uses, especially to rural living and low density residential development, and potential for dwellings in rural areas to lead to amenity conflicts with existing agricultural activities, and potential include the operation. Therefore, council officers recommend the council determine to refuse this application. And do I have a motion? Uh, I'd like to move the recommendation as printed. That's a motion. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Cordy? Is there any opposition? Councillor Henderson, would you please speak to your motion? Uh, yes, ma'am. It's, um, it's an interesting one at first glance. You know, you think, well, why not? Uh, well, three lots into two bigger allotments. Um, if uh, if this land is is really of no particular use in farming, which uh, I would agree with the Agriculture Victoria statement, it is actually of low to very low quality. However, the applicant himself was able to tell us that there is a farming operation currently there, and a new one is mooted for which of the grant being sought, and uh, and for some reason there needs to be two larger lots rather than three existing lots. So that would fit the, uh, the terms of the grant. However, uh, I think the argument has been put very well and lengthily by Agriculture Victoria, uh, as our planners consulted, to say that um, it's just not a good idea to create two lots when uh, a dwelling may be built as of right. Uh, it's hard to imagine that at least one of these lots would not be lost to a dwelling. Um, and any looking after the uh, the land according to the land management plan that has been submitted would probably go by the way as soon as the land changed hands. And uh, therefore, I can't see why there would be any benefit to uh, the community, to the land, uh, and to the um, to uh, anyone except the applicant, really, to create this. I think a far better solution for all concerned would be to for the applicant just to consolidate the lots into one lot and, and do what they will on it. Um, hopefully, some things will find a restoration of the one. Therefore, I, I uh, support and uh, encourage my fellow councillors to support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Councillor Cordy, would you like to speak to that motion now? Thanks, uh, Mayor. Look, um, I think it's a pretty, um, a, a, a bit concerned about the whole um, sort of driver behind this um, application. Like clearly, clearly, uh, the applicant seeking to uh, get create two allotments there with uh, that are over the forty hectares or hundred acres. So give them as of right for a dwelling. But you know the three allotments there. Well, well, Councillor Henderson was talking. I jotted down a list of about eleven enterprises that um, agricultural enterprises that could be operated from those uh, from those blocks. So, well, I'm, I'm happy to support the rejection of this, probably for different reasons to Councillor Henderson. But uh, yeah, I just think it's a all an application. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Cording. Would anyone else like to speak? Councillor McClure. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, um, I'm happy to support the recommendation of the views on um, Councillor Cordy hates me reminding him of the comment that he made a few years ago about uh, the loss of a historic bridge, a potential loss of a historic bridge. He made the comment that we're losing history one brick at a time. And I was, I've seen that many of these applications that we're losing farming land one application at a time. There's that many of these types of things coming out. And I'm 
I'm really concerned about the loss of our farming land around the community. I, you only have to look at the compliance frame, uh, public planning policy framework, which clearly um, spells out the council strategic direction to protect agriculture in, uh, in the Shire, protecting agricultural land for local and regional significant, uh, strategic significance, promoting agriculture and horticulture as the primary land use in the Shire, avoiding fragmentation of the production, productive agricultural land through the development of dwellings and subdivision, and to maintain productive capacity of land. There are other clauses, and clause 14.1 S talks about the objective of the protection of that agricultural land to protect the state's agricultural base by preserving productive farmland and have strategies to protect productive agricultural land from unplanned loss due to permanent changes in land use. Uh, I think we've got to protect that and agricultural land and, and letting it go to development, all, albeit large, large lots. We all know that um, once they get a planning permit, they've uh, approved for a lot over 40 hectares and has the use right to put a dwelling on it and then it becomes something else. And um, I don't, for that reason, I don't support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? Councillor Henderson, do you have a right of reply? That's fine. Thank you. All right. I will put the motion all in favour. That is everyone. Motion carried. We are moved, we are moving on to item 9.3.2, planning application PA 306 slash 2022, 22 Mills Road, Sunport. Councillor Cordy, would you like to introduce this item, please? Thanks, Thanks for that, Mayor. Um, the purpose of this report is to enable council to make a determination on application for a two lot subdivision at 22 Mills Road, Hartwood. The application has been referred to council for a decision because 12 objections have been received in 10 properties. The council officer recommendation is to approve the application. So basically this um, allotment is in um, it's a resident size allotment and it's in uh, close proximity to the um, primary school, the kinder and the uh, recreation reserve. And the recommendation I would uh, move as printed. Thank you, Councillor Cordy. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Mopby? Is there any opposition? Councillor Cordy, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, look, sometimes these are, these are difficult, and I do understand the, um, the community concern, but um, it's um, the officer's recommendation and, and the officer's work, in fact, is to um, um, determine what, what works and what's allowed under the uh, planning scheme. And this uh, subdivision is allowed under the planning scheme, in uh, my understanding, the general residential area. And there's really uh, no reason why it shouldn't go ahead. So, uh, yeah, I think it's um, just a, an example of the planner doing their job. So, well done. Councillor Mobby, would you like to speak? Thank you. Um, it is in the residential zone of Harcourt, Harcourt to Growing Township. It's only to a two block subdivision, not a three or four block subdivision that it could have applied for. So it won't ruin the amenity of the area. And more and more, as Harcourt develops, good allotments of that size are going to be needed. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? Councillor McClure. Oh, just to add um, the words of the other councillors, um, we talk about affordability of land around the shore at the moment. Um, these are small allotments. They will be cheaper than um, other, I would assume they would be cheaper than other normal size lots that can normally double this size. So in these times where when our kids are struggling now to, um, to find uh, money to pay for some of these exorbitant prices that some of these developers are charging that uh, I think it's probably good that some of these smaller allotments, particularly within the town, 
Uh, that's how you get all identities within the town. I mean, there's not a lot of land left out there to be developed, and I think uh, we're going to see more and more of um, high density being created. And it's not only going to happen in Castlemaine, uh, Harcourt, and Northern, and other smaller communities, Tarradale also, where these allotments are going to have to survive, uh, have divided up to create high densities in our towns for people to live because uh, we're running out of land that's easily uh, developed. Otherwise, uh, my experience of uh, it's covered in bushland, or if it's not zoned appropriately, it takes years and years and years. Um, it's much easier to create these small allotments in the town, and uh, and they're much more affordable to for a lot of our kids. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Cordy, you have a right of reply. Thanks, Mayor, but I think it's all been covered. Thank you. Fantastic. I will then put the motion all in favour. Motion carried. All right, we are on to 9.3.3. Approval of proposed budget 2023-2024 for public exhibition. Councillor Driscoll, would you like to introduce this item? Certainly, Mayor. Thank you. Um, the purpose of this item is to present the proposed budget 2023-24 to Council for approval to place it on public exhibition for three weeks from Wednesday the 19th of April, which is tomorrow, to Wednesday the 10th of May, 23. And advice submissions in accordance with section 961B of Local Government Act 2020. The section, this section of the Act requires Council to develop a budget, which we have in accordance with this community engagement policy. Thank you. Councillors, do I have a motion? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to recommend that the Council gives public notice of the proposed budget for 23-24 and makes it available for public inspection. The proposed budget of 23-24 at the Civic Centre on the council and on the council's website. And also, uh, the two, the received submission from the proposed budget 23-24 from Wednesday the 19th of April tomorrow until 5 p.m. on Wednesday the 10th. Of no, sorry, 10th of May 23. And three, he is any person who wishes to be heard and who has made a written submission by 5 p.m. on Wednesday the 10th of May 23 in relation to the proposed budget of 23-24. At a special meeting of council to be held at the Civic Centre, Castle Main at 5 pm on Tuesday, the 23rd of May. Uh, four considers any submissions made and adopts the council budget of 23-24 at the meeting of council to be held on Tuesday, the 20th of June 23. And five authorises the chief executive officer to undertake minor editorial changes to the proposed budget 23-24 if required. Six notes a general rate. And three differential rates will be struck, noting that the final differential rate may change when final revaluation figures are received from the Valuer General in Victoria. Seven notes the service charges under Section 162 of the Local Government Act 1989, and eight notes the fees and charges schedule detailed in this document, as well as the authorised community authorisation organisations. Thanks. Do I have a second? Mayor, I'd like to um, propose an amendment to the recommendation. I don't have a motion yet. I need a second or first. I'm sorry. Councillor McClure, are you seconding over there? Please, yes. Fantastic. Um, now I will ask if there are any opposition to this motion. Well, I'd like to propose an amendment, please, Matt. All right. Propose away, Councillor. Okay. So um, the amendment that I'm proposing is to delete item two and three in the pre recommendation and replace with item two, change the rate cap applied in the budget papers from 3.5% to 2.5% and three, prepare a revised budget reflecting that change for public exhibition and comment. That's it, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder for this amendment? Councillor Gardner, thank you. All right, now, remembering that we don't do amendments very often, I've got my little chart here and we're going through it. Okay, we have a seconder. 
Now we are going to debate that amendment. So, Councillor Cordy, would you like to speak to your amendment? Thanks, Mayor. And, and look, at the outset, I'll just say, uh, look, I commend the, uh, the uh, work that's gone into the budget. But, um, and it's a fantastic budget and there's a lot in there for our community. But from my perspective, I believe a 3.5% rate can increase is inappropriate at this time. It is the maximum allowed by the Essential Services Commission, but don't, we don't have to apply the maximum. Many residents are in financial difficulty following COVID. It is only the decrease from the month, three point or the adjustment from 3.5% to 2.5%. It's only a small decrease but it demonstrates that council does understand what's living pressure on our residents. Council is a very sound financial organisation. It was my understanding that proposed change will have minimal impact. I would also note that rate capping has been a very successful initiative of the state government. Rate increases were out of control prior to its Inception. We do not want to return to the days when rates are spiralling out of control. So I commend to my councillors this proposed amendment. I do apologise to our finance team if it gets up or the additional work that we create, but uh, I think 3.5% uh, uh, increase in, in, in the context of the rate cap is um, too much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gardner, would you like to speak now or you can speak at the end? I'll wait and see what anyone else wants to say. Fantastic. Would anyone else like to speak to this amendment? Councillor McClure? Do it all against it. You can speak about it, well, either for or against. It doesn't bother me as long as it's about the amendment and not the Aboriginal motion. Okay. I'd like to uh, speak against the, the amendment. Um, we discussed this at length at, at a briefing, at length. It wasn't a short discussion. Um, and uh, I'm disappointed that it's been raised at this point in time when we're on such a time frame to get this budget out to the general public to have, have their say about the, about the budget. Um, it's not a lot of dollars in the whole scheme of things, 1% in the increase of, I can't remember what the exact figures, but figures are, but it's not a lot of dollars. If you look at inflation, it's running now at 8%. It's nowhere near inflation, so the council is still going backwards, even at 3.5%. There are other caps within the council operations that have been held uh, for over 10 years, I understand, in operational budgets that have never risen over that period of time. We can't, this council can't continue to be holding back on our uh, operation and, and not in, keep keeping our increases going to the maximum amount we are, we are allowed by government. Otherwise, we're, we're never going to catch up. We'll, ne we'll never get that money back that we don't we don't uh, collect um, each year. It's, it's gone forever. And this council will keep going backwards in some sense until we can, um, unless we keep up with our budget increments. So, um, I don't support it, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Would anyone else like to speak to this amendment? Councillor Henderson. Yeah, I think, yeah, like Councillor McClure, I'm a bit surprised mm -hmm. we're eating it this time. I thought that, you know, there'd been a lot of work done by councillors over the last two months, not to mention the work done by the staff. Huge amount of work, and we are very much involved in this process, councillors. Are involved in being able to put forward their own projects for consideration in the budget, and every councillor takes the opportunity to have a consult with their communities. Um, and they, we look at what the officers are putting forward in terms of what they think would be good uh, works to be done over and above what operationally is required. And this year was really quite sobering and upsetting to see how little we could tackle that wasn't already committed by ongoing annual uh, commitments to repairing roads, repairing footpaths, uh, doing the work that council has to do 
just to keep us where we are and in a reasonable state. I look at taking off 1% of somebody's rate. Say you pay, the, I think the average annual rate is, is it about 2000 so just under two thousand dollars a year. So one percent of that, I think, is about twenty dollars. Um, so are we really making a big difference to someone? Well, some people pay a lot of money, more money, like twenty thousand a year. So actually, we think of saving them two hundred dollars. If someone's paying two twenty thousand dollars a year in rates, I suggest that maybe two hundred dollar change is not going to make that much difference to their overall balance of their books. In the grand scheme of things, I don't think the rates will be the biggest charge or certainly a drop wouldn't be that much. Uh, what are we going to do? I think, you know, if we've got 1% less, so we take off 1%. Uh, what was it? Uh, I think maybe $300,000 roughly we left, we have. Oh, so what do we do? Do we take $300,000 off, off our $1.3 million road resheating and repairing? Or do we... Get rid of that $60,000 $60, for our um, graffiti fix up and also the $60,000 going into the early years plan support and the disability action support. That's 120, so we've got to find another 180. Where's it going to come from? Community grants, we can throw those out. That's a little thousand. You know, money, we can't just say, oh, yeah, yeah, right, well, we, we won't um, we'll just change the budget with it easy. Uh, and all our rates and charges, all our fees and charges would have to be adjusted to, uh, which pushes the money back as well. This is not the time, this is not the thing to do. It is not, absolutely not. As Councillor McClure says, inflation is running far higher than this, the cost to council year on year increasing 7 8%. 3.5 is what the government says we can have. We must have it. We must have it. Because otherwise, this council is going to go deeper and deeper into a hole where we'll be able to deliver on uh, very little. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mulvey. I'm um, going to support, support the amendment. If we take 1% of, of the Worked in budget or not. Councillor Henderson says it's 300,000. I'm not exactly sure about that figure. I think it's a bit lower, much lower, like 100 or something thousand. But I may be wrong. But more to the point is the principle of Councillor, would you like clarification on that? No, if, if possible, but Director No. Thank you. It is um, close to the $150,000 per five percent. So it would be closer to the three hundred thousand dollar mark. Sorry, sorry, point five, yeah, half a percent. Sorry. Thank you, director. Sorry, 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 I didn't understand that. Thank you, Could you repeat it? Three. So it is closer to the three hundred thousand dollar mark for a one percent reduction. Correct. That aside, Councillor Henderson's also talking about a big hole. This council is very financially stable. If for 12 months we do have to take off $300,000 worth of, maybe it's not worth, maybe it's other pieces in the budget. But Councillor Cordy and Councillor McClure just said about inflation, reality is, unfortunately, <laughs> there are people out there that are hurting, and $20 may not be much to some of us, and I can tell you it's a lot to a lot of people. And to suggest that someone paying 20,000 in rates and was only going to save 200, that is a strange comparison to me. The reality is, yes, we've all done a lot of work, and the staff especially, to produce a, a very good budget that does works, and even it's restricted in the works that you would like to do. So you can take great capping off. And somebody around here may suggest we put the rates up by 6%. If for 12 months we reduce it to, to 2.5 instead of 3.5, I can't see it affecting the municipality that much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Would anyone else wish to speak to this? Councillor Driscoll? 
Thanks, man. Um, council, council offers 100, over 100 services, and every time um, we, we do this, you know, if we if we print this down $300,000, then the question comes to mind is what, what service would Council Accordion, Maltby and Garden would like to, what services would I like to delete from the current services that we do? Because I think whilst, you know, everybody wants to be Santa Claus, um, I think this is economically irresponsible to go ahead with this and I, and I don't support that motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Gardner, would you like to speak now? Yeah, thanks. Oh, start. Um, so I think a um, couple of things. First thing, um, comments made that this was a surprise. I mean, not only was it a surprise, I think um, Tony has um, had that position from day one um, and um, in the discussions. Um, and I probably have moved and shifted my view and opinion. And I still haven't personally um, landed on where I am with it. However, I think for me, um, probably in the last week or two, um, it, it's sort of a realisation there are people struggling out there. Um, and yes, you know, inflation 7 8%, but I don't think that means or matters that council then has to keep jacking up the rates. Um, and to Councillor Driscoll, you're quite right. We all like to be Santa Claus and we all like to do everything. And I know myself, there are certain things in terms of services, we, you know, we're going to have issues with coming up. Um, but we just can't keep putting it up. People can't afford it. Um, every year, um, it's just more and more and more. And I really do think that um, even if this doesn't get up um, and doesn't get changed in the long run, um, I do think we need to have a broader discussion out there in the community. And it's around about, you know, how much bed pay am I prepared to get back? Um, we do, as a council, um, and officers in particular, you know, we get so much requests, so many, you know, requests for this, do this, do this, do that, and we do them all. Um, but probably like every, or the Victorian government, I mean, currently signalling that, you know, it's going to be a horror budget. Um, there's lots of cuts coming. Um, and we as a council shouldn't be um, fenced off from these discussions. Um, we tend to just roll along and keep doling out the same. So I do think it is an important discussion to have and I'm grateful for Tony and Race because there are people who can't afford it. Um, and just jacking up rates all the time, just because you can, is something that needs to be thought about. Thank you, Councillor. All right, so I've been informed that there is no right of reply in terms of amendments. So that being given, I'm going to put the amendment now and we will vote on it. So all in favour of the amendment and against, the amendment is lost. Can we do a division? We can do a division. All in favour of the amendment, Councillor Cordy, Councillor Motby and Councillor Gardner, and all against the amendment, Councillor McClure, Councillor Driscoll, Councillor Henderson and Councillor Ania. Given that the amendment has been lost, we return now to the original motion, which was um, to, which was as printed and was made by Councillor Driscoll. We have had this seconded by Councillor McClure and now we will return to debating this motion. So, Councillor Driscoll, would you like to speak to your motion? Uh, thanks, Ben. Um, so, just a couple of things in terms of the, the budget. Uh, sorry, specifically, there's, um, I understand if there's people struggling out there on, um, on, on ratepayers out there that we have a specific policy in place for ratepayers who, if they're having some hardship, they can certainly come to us and and ask for for um, some options that they might that might be might have. So, council does understand that there are difficult times. Um, so, um, 
those people can come to us and ask the question, what, 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 how can we help you? So just want to put that out there. Um, I, yes, we're travelling okay, and the reason we're travelling okay is because Council uh, have been um, responsible. There's, so there's several councils and administration over financially, and I don't want to be one of those, and that's why I, want, I, I think as this, um, this budget is fair and reasonable and has been debated within Council, the, the executive have done, a, have done a tremendous job. Um, so far, I think, and this is for public um, exhibition. So I just ask everybody to have a bit of a read over it. And if you do have thoughts, and you do, if you do agree with with um, other councils or have any suggestions at all, please put it in. We're happy to listen to it and take it on board. But uh, I think this is a responsible budget financially. If we don't keep up with um, with with inflation and, and, and costs then we're going to go backwards and I think we'll put a major burden on future councils if we don't keep up. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Driscoll. Councillor McClure, would you like to speak now or at the end? Hello, oh, no, Councillor Excellent. And um, I, I, I want to support uh, Matt's uh, motion. Um, it's a good budget. I think it is a responsible budget. Uh, there's been a lot of work put into this budget. Uh, with Lisa and her team, uh, Caroline Ross, I know has worked day and night, put this budget together. It's a huge job. It's not a little job, and I don't know when they start, but I suspect they start as soon as they finish the previous one. Um, I know there's been a lot of um, um, meetings within council staff themselves to put together, submit their um, their wish list for, for the year, and I understand that's been savagely cut unlike um, everything else in the community. So uh, the council's had our opportunity to put forward the projects that we've been asked to look at, and I'm happy that a couple of those have got on board, principally in relation to the recreation reserves at the Campus Creek and, and the Head Reserve. Um, I, I asked people to have a look at uh, the Mayor's introduction to the document. It highlights uh, some great things that we've, initiatives that we're looking at doing this year, particularly in relation to um, a, a number of recreational reserves, the Bill Wil Woodfall Recreation Reserve, uh, the, the um, drains rooms, the installation of temporary chain facilities at Camp Reserve and Camels Creek, as I mentioned before, uh, new netball courts at Camels Creek, um, subject to government funding, government grant funding, the success of that, progressing multi-year projects, including the Castlemaine Camels Creek levy, levy banks, Restoring the former Wesleyan Church at Tewton, which is underway, continuing that work on the upgrade of Frederick, Frederick Street um, to the tune of $1.64 million, depending on the successful receipt of grant funding, two bridges, uh, James Bridge on Myrtle Creek and the Burgon Street Bridge at Vaughan, um, the annual renewal replacement program across a range of assets, including buildings, plant machinery, swimming pools, major sheetings, and so forth and um, some minor projects, including Bellmouth uh, resealing. There's some great initiatives in this, pro um, in this budget within the parameters that are within the money that we've, that we've got and uh, reducing it by any amount just puts stress on, um, on areas of the budget. And I stress again, this council is going to have some serious decisions to make going forward because we've got inflation running at 8% and I don't, nobody knows that I might go a bit more than sort of cancel it. This will might know a bit more than me about how long we're likely to be facing an 8% um, inflation situation. It might be for 12 months, it might go on, it might come back, I don't know. But um, the cost of construction projects, I know, have gone up 30%. So I know that the work that our Director of Infrastructure and Development is trying to do is doing it with an increase in costs of 30% in some areas. So that means you can't do as much as what he would like to do. So um, we're all facing um, increases in costs right across the board, council, everybody. And by going back just a little bit is not the right thing to do. We need to keep trying to keep up with um, as best we can with um, what we can do within the organisation. I mean, if we don't, we're, Put the rates up to the maximum amount that we can, you'll never get that money back. It's lost forever. 
and it compounds. I think you look back over a 10 year period, it's compounded. It's, it's of course, a, a bigger over a 10 year period if you, if you compound it over that period. You know, I, I support the, the document. It's a great document that's been put together by a great team. And I would I hope that uh, people do in, in the community do have time to have a look at it, take time to, to read it, take time to ask questions of any of our officers if they do have uh, questions and to put in submissions if they think there's something else that we've missed. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Oops, turn the page. Um, would anyone else like to speak to this? Councillor Cordy. Uh, oh, sorry. Councillor Cordy. Mike, is your first? No. Quickest first, go on, Councillor Cordy. Okay. Um, look, it's a, it's a great budget. There's a lot in it for our community. But I'd like, I'd like our community to um, to read the budget and give us feedback. What what council are voting on tonight is, and this is a decision making forum, not not a briefing session. When we talk about these things, what council are voting on tonight is to uh, increase the rates by three and a half percent, which is the maximum allowable, but also to increase the um, fees and charges similarly and uh, yeah I'm not happy about it and uh, you yeah, know the number the numbers are there but uh, I'd like the community to analyze this and uh, give us feedback because uh, you know there's still time to do something thank you thank you councillor Cordy would any other councillor like to speak to this matter councillor Henderson no I've got to say something about the budget and it's, it's a good budget, you know that. It's financially responsible. It's taking what the uh, state government will let us have. We thought, wow, 3.5 percent, really, truly, we've only had one to 1.5 for the last four years. But guess what? Our costs have gone up enormously in the last 12 months. And that's been not just council, everyone's costs, but we know that council is uh, particularly exposed to costs of materials and uh, everything to do with building and, and picking and mending, et cetera. So our suppliers are charging us, well, anything up to 30% more than they were last year, and we're asking the community for 3.5% more. And I'll reiterate, if we ask them for 2.5%, we'd be dropping by 1%. So just, you know, the hypothetical, the median, uh, rate payer will be paying twenty dollars less than we're going to ask, or five dollars a quarter. So we'll be knocking five dollars a quarter off anything. I suggest that anyone who owns uh, is paying a mortgage, uh, yeah, they are hurting. Uh, their insurance will probably go up this year by far more than three point five percent, as will their electricity bills and their water bills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's all going to get big, but I don't think we can be the uh, and the number of ones to go, oh, well, we'll, we'll you know, the community is hurting, therefore, council won't take any more. We have a responsibility far wider than just a single utility. We, we have a responsibility across, as council just said, with a hundred different services, a lot of which are not ones that we add on pretty bits because they're nice, but because the state government requires us to do so. We are required to operate in so many different areas, apart from our rates of rubbish and next roads. So um, we have to take what we can, and this council, through a police art, compounding 3.5% loss over 10 years is a big hole for any council. No one would want to say so. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? Uh, Councillor Driscoll, you have a right of reply. Um, thanks, Media. Just to reiterate, um, you know, I think it's a sound budget. It's, it's responsible, um, and we've we've driven as much as we possibly can. But unfortunately, um, it, it is what it is, and uh, I think um, I um, continue to think that uh, we, as a council, act responsibly in these situations and we look at both sides and i want to thank the finance department lisa carolyn and her team for the 
many, many hours that I know that they've done on this budget because I, I know that themselves and as, as us as councillors are trying very hard as best we can to be responsible. And and, um, and I just thank you for, for that great work done. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, councillors. Um, I will now put the motion. All in favour? That's unanimous and the motion Can I have a division, um, division, please? Yep, we will have a division, so all in favour? That is Councillor McClure, Councillor Maltby, Councillor Cordy, Councillor Driscoll, Councillor Gardner, Councillor Henderson and Councillor Ania. That is everyone. Um, I'm going to jump in and say a couple of things because I would not feel good if I didn't. And I think instead of trying to reinvent it, I'm going to read from my mayoral message, which I was lucky enough to write last week. But help, and I'm, I really want to say a big thanks to both Carolyn Ross and Anne-Marie Middlemars who um, moderated me and made sure that I wasn't getting too cranky about things in my message, as I want to do sometimes. Um, but this is what I'll share. This year's budget process was the most challenging I've experienced yet. For most local governments, the reality of operating under rate capping with the cost of materials and services skyrocketing and with increasing responsibilities and expectations from various levels of government and the community means that we do not have enough funds to do the work that everyone would like us to do. It also means that we are having to make increasingly hard decisions when developing the budget, something we have wrestled with and take seriously. That said, we've developed a balanced budget that I'm proud to work with my fellow councillors and staff to deliver. As you read this document, and I hope that everyone does read it, I hope you're able to appreciate the forest for the trees, all the good things we're funding in the year ahead, big and small. And then I go on to talk about some of those things. Um, when we started the budget process, it was looking very grim. And I feel that we've arrived at a bit of a lighter place. It is not as grim as I think it could have been. I understand the desire for some councillors to want to, um, to lower rates. I really do. I, I just want to let people know that there is no shame in not being able to afford your rates sometimes. This is the first year since I've been a single parent and a homeowner that I've been able to afford my rates without relying on that, um, with our financial hardship policy. And I am the mayor. And I can't afford my rates sometimes. I get it. It is hard that council have, before I was on council, when I was just a, a rate payer, having a bit of a struggle, council officers helped me to set up a payment plan that worked for me so that I was able to afford my rates. Um, don't feel like you have to run away from it or that there is any shame. We know that things are hard right now. Um, that, that is always a possibility for you. I think that's something that I really wanted to share because it's important for me that people know we're not just trying to make everyone's life worse, we're not trying to increase rates because we want to get you. <laughs> it is really tough right now to deliver the services that we know that people need with the amount of resourcing we have. Um, and this is going to be an ongoing thing that we're going to have to work on. I agree with Councillor Gardner. I agree with Councillor Cordy and Councillor Maltby. We want to hear from people about how this affects you and we need to keep having this conversation. Um, but again, thank you to our staff who prepared this, Director Knight, thank you, Carolyn Ross, Madeline Redman and Kay Davis in particular. The finance team has been incredible and with some very tight turnarounds as well. Um, please, anyone who is still watching YouTube, do read your budget document. If you don't understand it, find someone to explain it to you. I have only recently become comfortable with financial information through the patients of my fellow councillors and council officers. If you don't understand it, just ask for help. It's better to know what you're reading. Um, again, it's always, it's always a bit of a celebration when we put out the proposed budget for public exhibition. This is not the end. We have not adopted the budget yet. That will happen in June. There is still time for you to give a submission. And then you can also come and speak to us at a special meeting of council. Um, the two years that we've done that previously, it has been invaluable. So please consider that if you have any feedback on the budget. And right now we're going to move along from the budget to item 9.3.4, which is adoption of the cash management policy. Um, Councillor Driscoll, would you like to introduce this item? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, the cash management policy was last adopted in 2019. 
And the purpose of this policy is to ensure that all cash management investment decisions are made in accordance with the relevant legislation, that interest earnings are maximised and credit risk is managed, and to ensure the security of public funds. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a motion? Yes, uh, Mayor, I'd like to recommend that Council adopts the cash management policy. Thank you, Councillor Driscoll. Do I have a second? Councillor Gardner. Um, any opposition? No. Then, Councillor Driscoll, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, thank you. Yes, thanks, Mayor. Um, as I mentioned, the current cash management policy was adopted by Council in October 20, uh, sorry, 2019 and addresses the management and investments of funds which are uh, excessive immediate short-term needs. There's no significant changes um, in this policy other than uh, 3.9 of the policy. And 3.9 of the policy is uh, local content. And I'll read that out if I could. The council will provide preference to financial institu institutions that maintain a physical presence in the Shire through a branch of their operations where the investment is compliant with overall policy credit limits and individual institutions' limits of this policy, that's section 3.5a and 3.5b, and the rate of interest is greater than or equal to other investments that may be on offer to council at the time of investment. In terms of section 3.8 and 3.9, where there is a conflict, investment will take priority over local content. So nothing changes it up except for, for that. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Driscoll. Councillor Gardner, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, I think uh, Councillor Driscoll has, um, I like most of it, I, um, but that local content for me um, sought to discard that because I feel that in, in an era where branches are closing left, right and centre and, and it's sort of happening um, around us at the moment. Um, to me, it's about a message um, and if if um, we have more branches closing because we have lost, uh, was it Westpac? That was this year. Um, and we're down to uh, National Bending and Bendigo. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if this I'm lost still here. I'm lost still here. Sorry, don't bang for them. So I don't know. Um, so I think as a local government and organisations, like if places aren't shutting their branches down, um, we should be trying to um, put pressure on them and supporting our community and preventing it. So it's an option um, and maybe it depends on in the future if um, we get less and less branches. Thank you, Councillor Gardner. Would anyone else like to speak to this item? No. Councillor Driscoll, would you like another go? Uh, no, thanks, Ben. All right, I will then put the motion all in favour. Motion carried. Okay, we are up to item 10, which is delegates' reports. Councillors, are there any delegates' reports? Councillor Motby. Thank you. Um, as you know, I'm the council rep on the LGBTQIA plus theory committee. Um, in the coming week, Castlemaine's festival, or like the better description, uh, Castlemaine has lots of festivals. In the coming weeks, Pride Week is happening on the 28th of April through to May the 6th. And the two uh, functions that I think I'll just highlight, um, one's um, one of the biggest parts of the Pride Picnic up in Tannable Gardens on a Sunday afternoon, which is always well attended and certainly will be again. But Stan Munro from Lay Girls, I think, lived in this area uh, 20 or 30 years ago, possibly. He's now 80. He's coming back to perform at the Theatre Royal on Saturday the 29th of April. But in general, they have organised a very good program for a week and it will help the people in that community and certainly the people out of, in the wider community who do support them. So, there you go. Thank you, Councillor Mockby. Are there any other delegates' reports? Councillor I just thought I'd give a quick one. Um, probably most people would know the Melbourne East Fair happened, um, seemed like weeks ago now, but it was only last week, actually. Um, 
And I just also want to shout out to our officers. I know that every year permits required um, can be um, issues. Um, this year, everything went a little bit But our permits from our perspective went smooth. There's still an issue with Vic Roads um, closing, which obviously will be an ongoing discussion and it's been in the paper and it's been in all over the radio and I will be keen to support um, Moulding in particular on what we can do to ensure that it survives. I mean, I know that it's a great attraction bringing people into Moulding and I know that shops have sort of suggested they um, were up like five times more than normal. Um, so it's quite a big event, and plus, you know, everyone, a lot of people in the local community are involved. Obviously, uh, the organisers, um, the modern Eastern Fair organisers, um, there's lots of volunteers. Um, it's just a great event, so really we'll be keen to make sure it happens again in the future. Thank you, Councillor Gardner. Are there any other delegates' reports? Councillor Driscoll? Thanks, Vance. I'll say a couple of things. Um, so. I know it's on your delegates report, but uh, I just really enjoyed going down to Melbourne to see the HMS, HMAS Castlemaine, the ship and frigate there with uh, Council Hand and yourself, Mayor and myself. It was really good. And the volunteers there were fantastic, and it's really good. I encourage everybody to, to, to go down if they're interested down in Williamstown. And I also attended the Peter Turner, the, 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 the show car and show, the, the shine car show, which I entered my own car there, and unfortunately, I I didn't win, so I have to have a chat with some of the organisers there. Um, and I just want to point out this Saturday, um, they've got my home network housing for it at the, at the uh, town hall between it, um, which is run, run by our own, um, you know, um, at my home network, my home network housing for them. Um, so it'd be, it, I think it starts at town hall at 1.30, so I think you can get tickets for that. But, uh, you know, it's a big issue, as we've all stated a few times, but uh, it's, it's on this Saturday, so I just thought to talk, tell people that too. that's for free, obviously, and, and listen and see what we, what, we can, what we can do. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Driscoll. Um, the, I was going to speak to that uh, thing as well. I'm really glad you mentioned it. Uh, it is going to be a really interesting forum where we'll have all three tiers of government represented. So myself, uh, Lisa Chesters and Marie Edwards, as well as our... Housing Solutions Officer Claire and our Coordinator of Strategic Planning, Lauren. And from the questions that we're getting from community already um, that are getting submitted to be asked on the day, there's going to be a lot of really interesting conversation and we'll all be in the same room, which is something that doesn't happen a lot of the time. So, um, yeah, I do encourage people to come along to that. It is free, it is inclusive and it's only a couple of hours and you never know, we might solve some things. So I think that would, that's a really great one to be involved in. Sure. Does anyone else have a delegates report before I jump in? You'll see my voice improved quite a bit because I had that very hot cup of tea right at the start of the meeting, so I'm actually powering through okay. I've had another relatively busy month, although we haven't quite made it to the, the end of the second page yet. You never know, now we might get there. Um, some of the highlights for me, as Councillor Driscoll said, going to see the HMAS Castle Main, um, Councillor Driscoll and Councillor Henderson and myself, it was really fun. I did not know that I would have so much fun being on a ship. And I haven't been on many ships, but I could have stayed on that ship for a long time. Um, the volunteers were very generous with their time and with their expertise and also with their gifts. They gifted to us a number of pictures, um, beautiful framed things, and also a bit of the original mast with a, a penny in it, which they sourced also from the correct year. So all of that is sitting in the councillor's lounge at the moment, but I've been talking to Castlemaine RSL, who um, Councillor Driscoll informed me have an HMAS Castlemaine corner, and I'm hoping to gift it to them so that we have some room back in the lounge. Um, but it was, it was really a very cool experience, and I'm hoping to take my kids down as well because I think they get a lot out of it as well. It's quite a family experience. I know your grandson, Councillor Henderson, had a, had a reasonable time. Yes. So that was great. Um, two that I did on one weekend, kind of back to back, were the Follow the Thread exhibition, which was an event put on by the Castlemaine branch of the Embroiderers Guild. I don't know much about embroidery, honestly, and I was very surprised with the um, 
I, I guess the diversity of what falls under embroidery. There was a lot going on. Uh, it was incredibly impressive. They almost convinced me to sign up as a member on the day, but I eventually said, you know what, I'm going to think about it because I'm, I'm a little bit busy. Um, I do think it will be a passion of mine in the future because I quite like to learn how to do some of that fancy stuff. It was, but it was very impressive um, and just a beautiful event. Um, lots, yeah, really, really fun. I spent a lot of time there as well. Then the next day, like Councillor Driscoll, I went out to the Peter Turner Memorial Show and Shine Car Show in Guildford. Again, I don't know a lot about cars, but I've been getting out and getting amongst it lately and seeing a lot of cars and talking to people about their cars. I don't know if I'm ever going to become a car person, but what I do love is other people being passionate about things. So it doesn't really matter what it is. When people are really into something and want to tell me all about it, it, it kind of fills my cup. Um, and they, again, were very generous. They, um, yeah, they were lovely. And I think one of the very promising things about that is, you know, they've been running this event for a couple of years, I think, and this was the first time that they kind of been at capacity with the amount of cars there. They were kind of looking around going, what are we going to do? We're running out of room. So these, these events are growing. People, you know, love coming here and bringing their cars. And just the community that was felt on that day was very special. Um, another one that uh, that was a really nice morning for me, and it was such such a small little event, but yeah, I think it really meant a lot, was um, uh, it was a couple of Fridays ago now, and I can't remember the date, I'm sorry, but it was the day of transgender visibility. And I was able to, that morning, go down and raise the transgender flag outside the market building on our community flagpole. Um, we had a number of members from the LGBTIQA plus steering group, a lot of officers, the CEO was there, and it was really nice because that community have had it hard lately. There have been some really unpleasant things happening, and um, it was really nice that, that we were able to show our support for them on that day, um, and I know how much they appreciated feeling seen and feeling like they were part of the community. Uh, the last one that I'll mention is, um, so I think sometime this month, maybe last month, I got some exciting news that I'd been accepted as a member of the local government mayoral advisory panel for this year, which is a panel of 14 mayors this year from around Victoria that um, meets with the Minister for Local Government four times throughout their year and advises them on things. And so I was able to go down to the first meeting and meet all these other mayors, some of which I've, I've met before, but some metro mayors who I've never met, and just an amazing diversity of mayors um, and have this really interesting conversation because we're all kind of facing the same problems, but also there's, there's such diversity between different councils. It was really interesting. So that's something I get to do three more times this year. I'm so excited about it and it's been such a positive experience so far. And that is me done. CEO, would you like to share your delegates from <laughs> Thanks very much, Mayor. Uh, certainly would like to, uh, but first, can I just say thank you to all of you councillors as well for all of the, the thought and the care and the effort and the time and ultimately for the direction that you've given to us, the staff, in developing your draft budget that you can now approve releasing tonight. We really appreciate all of what you've done to, to put that together. Um, and, and give us that direction. So thank you. And I, I, I hope that uh, the community is able to appreciate just a little bit of how hard that is for you through the debate that you've had tonight in, in what's the right rate to strike and what are the right things to include and not. It's, uh, uh, I wish people could see all of those debates that you have because they just are so difficult. And they're, as you said, Mayor, they're not getting easier, they're getting harder all the time. So thank you all for that, first of all. Uh, can I add my thanks as well to Director Knight and to uh, Carolyn Ross and all the finance team as well who have the fabulous job of having put all of that documentation together and to lead all of us, including all of the organisation as well as you, through the process to get your draft budget together. Equally, I want to thank Director Ania and all of the managers across the organisation and many, many staff who actually do a lot of the work in the background that feeds into that process that you see through our finance team and through Director Knight as well. So thanks to everyone in the organisation who's who puts in a lot of time to supporting that process as well, Mayor. Uh, just two I'll pick up on from my list. I've been answering questions, of course, as usual. 
The testimony state festival opening night performance mayor was a was a fantastic night. We were both there. It really kicked off a great couple of weeks of the Castlemaine State Festival, I thought. Uh, and I certainly uh, my wife and I got to enjoy many of the events that were on over that, that couple of weeks. So I just wanted to say congratulations to the State Festival Committee for once again putting on a great festival and a special acknowledgement of Glenn Roberts, who's uh, now the outgoing director of the festival. And we'll look forward to seeing who's next and what, what they bring as well. But congratulations to him. And I really also want to say again, thanks very much to all of the staff who are in the background supporting the state festival's work. It takes people from across the entire organisation to help that, that to happen. Um, and I really thank them again for all of their work to, to uh, make sure that it went as, as good as it possibly could. Uh, over the page, I wanted to note the um, meeting where we had a presentation. This, many of the CEOs across the state had a presentation from the Executive Director of Tourism and Events, which is in the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions, uh, about uh, what's called the Vista Economy Partnership Policy Framework. What that means is what the new version of tourism boards will look like across Victoria. And over the next six months or so, we will be going through a process along with um, other councils in our region to look at what's the best model for the longer term uh, tourism in our area. And uh, we'll get you informed on how that goes, but that's really looking at what's the right structure, what's the makeup, so who's involved in it, and what's very important, what's the geographical area that a particular tourism area will service. So a fair bit of work ahead for us over the next six months or so to resolve that mess. Thank you. Thanks, Eugene. Councillor Lacroix. Um, can I just ask a question? Yeah. Okay. Um, just in relation, I noticed the last item on the it talks about foundation uh, to discuss homelessness and graffiti. And I had raised this with Director Knight and other councillors. My concerns, and I know everybody else's concerns, about the apparent increasing homelessness around the community that I've seen evident that particularly people sleeping in cars so I've increased visibly around the community that I've that I've noticed in recent times. Um, Lisa or Mayor, could you tell us a little bit about the meeting with the police and what might have come out of that uh, initiative that came out of that meeting? Is that a project? I might, I'm going to defer to Director Knight here. I think because she is definitely more across it than me, but I will say it was a really useful and productive meeting. Um, yeah, thank you, Director Knight. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor, for the question. So, Mayor and I met uh, with a number of um, sergeants from Big Pole, uh, from the local area of command uh, through the goldfields and also, also through Castlemaine Police. And that's off the back of discussions following the October 22 floods, sorry, 23 floods. And collaboration with the range of agencies, but uh, certainly councillors and community have been uh, talking to us, talking to me, and right across the organisation about concerns with homelessness and what we can do. So Victoria Police collaborate with council, uh, particularly for local laws officers and uh, through our aged care services, Delkia Health, and some other um, uh, agencies, particularly that are located in Bendigo, about what our opportunities are. So. Delkia Health do provide some limited support and it is a volunteer-based program that they run. So the outcome of that meeting is that Casamane Police, Victoria Police, Delkia Health and a range of agencies such as Women's Health, Modern Mallee, um, Modern Mallee Multicultural Services, um, Salvation Army and even through our Emergency Management Cluster group of five councils, we're all looking at what the opportunities are to collaborate to get a better outcome. Right now, there are no services um, that we can actually redirect many of our, our homeless people across the Shire. What was also indicated to us is many of the people that the police have spoken to do not wish to receive services. They do not want referrals and they do not see that they need any support. So there are certain limitations there as to what we can do to help and we'll continue to work with agencies, particularly within the Shire, but where there's funding and scope or remit of other housing agencies and health agencies outside the Shire, we'll continue to do everything that we can. But there's no doubt it's, it's a challenge at the moment. The number of homeless people in the Shire is more visible. 
we do have a very small percentage of the homeless people where we're getting reports of um, alcohol and drug use and aggression, but they are very small in numbers. The, the majority of, of our homeless people right across the Shire um, are there for very unfortunate reasons, and we want to do everything that we can to help them. Thank Does you. that answer your question, Councillor? Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's just, it's, uh, I mean, it's just evident that it's increasing. And, I mean, I've, I've never seen it so usually around the Shire in recent times. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that the mechanism, I might hate to think that we, even if they, people don't want the services, that we don't just move them on, that we find somewhere for them to move to, mm -hmm. uh, even if they're still living in the car and that's their preference to do that, that we find them somewhere to go. But, you know, anyway, it's a problem, but thank you for that. Very good. Thank you, Councillor McClure and Director Nye. It was a it was a really productive conversation, but at the same time, that frustration is there that the, the, that we just don't have the services currently. Um, Delcaire are able to offer some, but you know everyone seems to be in agreement that more is needed. So a lot of that will be advocating for better services, which um, I know Director Knight and her team do a lot already. It's just doing that more and more. Um, there is, I, I forgot one off my list that I'd just like to highlight quickly because it was a bit of fun. Um, so our council, along with a bunch of other councils, are members of a lot of capacity councils. And every so often, maybe every two or three months, I know you didn't want me to talk about this, but I'm going to, um, we get together and have a meeting, all the CEOs and mayors. And so I've only been to one so far. It was over in Lodden. What? Below, sorry. It was it was far and flat, um, but it was lovely to meet everyone. Um, and, and part of what we're able to do, or part of what was kind of built into this, is that the, the host council would give a bit of an update of things. And we were the host council this time, and we took everyone on a bus tour, which I know councillors have experienced before. Um, it was very similar to the original bus tour that we went on, except Darren and I were co-hosting it. Um, with, a, with a microphone at the front of the bus. It was really, really great. Um, and I have had nothing but good feedback from the mayors and CEOs on that bus. It was really nice to share our shire with people who understand just inherently from working in the sector, the way they do, the, the challenges, but also the role of being involved in local government. Um, it's just nice to show, I don't know, show up a little bit and go, these are the things that we're really proud of as a Shire and as a council. Um, so I wanted to mention that because it was really, it was fun, one, and sometimes I don't get to do very many fun things, but it was fun. But it was also just nice to really bring home how many good things are happening here. And it, was, it made me feel really proud. Um, so I wanted to share that, last of all. Thank you. We are now on to item 11, notices of motion. There are nil, item 12. Urgent special business, there is nil. Item 13, confidential items, there is nil. Which brings us to item 14, and I will close the meeting. Thank you very much, everyone.